Along the shore, we always talk about coastal flooding. Strong onshore winds traveling a great distance that pile water up to the brink, spilling onto land. However, as Isaac Newton's third law states, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That is the blowout tide. Blowout tides make low tide look like no tide. Blowout tides are caused by many of the opposite ingredients for coastal flooding. Instead of a strong onshore wind, blowout tides need a strong offshore wind to carry water away from the shore. Coastal flooding typically happens at high tide, while blowout tides typically happen at low tide. One thing coastal flooding and blowout tides do have in common, though, is that they both are more likely to occur during a full or new moon. During this time, low tides are lower to begin with, giving blowout tides a greater opportunity of happening. Blowout tides can expose mud at the bottom of bays and tidal rivers. On the ocean side, you may have to trek hundreds of feet to get to the ocean line. Blowout tides can be dangerous, too. They could put boats on the sandy or muddy bottom. Unable to be buoyed by the water, they may tip over, causing damage. The lower water can be a hazard to navigation by marine vessels, too. When blowout tides are expected, the National Weather Service will issue a low water advisory, which the media and other agencies pass along to keep you safe. Blowout tides happen much less frequently than coastal flooding. For example, right here in Atlantic City, coastal flooding happens on average about two dozen times a year, compared to the blowout tides, which might happen once or twice a year. For Lee Enterprises, I'm President Atlantic City Meteorologist, Joe Martucci.